It was the 14th of October. So it's October 14th. And it was homecoming, which in itself is so much fun because as a girl, you get to get all dressed up and you get to put on your high heels and you get to go take pictures. I, I did not want to go to this high school dance. It wasn't even in my high school, but my friends kept on trying to convince me to go to this dance, go to this dance. And so finally I'm like, all right, fine, I'll go to this dance. And so living in Arkansas, there's this place called Crystal Bridges, which is where a lot of people for homecoming and prom will go to take their pictures. So I went with my sister and we went to go take our pictures at Crystal Bridges and I walked down the stairs and I saw an awesome fella and his name was Josh McDaniel as I later came to find out. I see Emma Jenkins walking down. And I was so excited because I heard that it was a possibility that he was going to be going to Liberty which is the college that I had already committed to going to. And living in Arkansas, finding people that are going to college all the way over in Virginia is pretty rare. So that in itself made me happy dance. But I thought that he was really, really cool. So we got to take a picture, which was just stellar. But then that was really... That was it. Nothing much. But I still thought she was a great person. So what I did is I sent her a little message on Instagram. Two days passed by and I went on to Instagram and I had a message from the one and only Josh McDaniel. And y'all, I can't tell you how encouraging it was to me because in this season of my life, I received a lot of bullying because of, because of how I believe in Jesus and because my faith in Jesus, it causes me to just love you because you're so loved and I can't help but tell you. And he sent me a message that was just so encouraging and reminded me of who who I am in the Lord and reminded me that my identity is not found in the comments of other people which although I already know that I don't think you could ever be reminded of that too many times and so that that was just absolutely beautiful and then after that a little bit down the road a couple weeks later I was thinking I was like you know I'm I'm gonna go to Liberty I found out that Josh was officially going to Liberty. And so I was stoked because we were gonna get to go to the Lynchburg VA together. And so I sent him a message. I was like, hey, I am so excited that the Lord has given you clarity on where to go. And I'm so thankful I get to go with you. And so we started talking a little bit and said, hey, since we're both going to Liberty, why don't we go ahead and go get coffee together so we can get to know each other. And whenever we're 15 hours from home, we'll have somebody that we know. So it's January 12th and we finally uh, settle on a coffee date and I remember it I arrived early and it was right after school and I could barely even think about school just because I was so excited to meet Emma and at this time I didn't really have feelings for her I just knew she was an awesome person and I can't wait to get to know her more I had soccer practice that day and so I came after soccer practice to meet him at the coffee shop and I was all sweaty and did not feel like I was properly dressed for a coffee date. It's in her cute little soccer jersey and I went and got her tea because she doesn't like coffee. He paid for my tea because I don't really drink coffee that much but he paid for my tea. And we just had a great time because we just gotta sit and talk and I gotta figure out of who Emma Jenkins is and what makes her Emma Jenkins. We talked for I don't even know how long, but he was one of the easiest people that I've ever talked with. And it was effortless to talk to him because out of your mouth is an overflow of what's in your heart. And Jesus just overflowed into the beauty of what we were talking about. And it was so refreshing. I remember leaving that coffee date so just refreshed and so excited because I was like, man, I, I know I'm gonna have an awesome friend when I go to college from the get-go who's gonna just, I can love Jesus with him. After that, I didn't really see her until... Prom, and prom is also fun because just like homecoming, you get to get all dressed up and that that's just so fun. But something that I love about getting dressed up for dances is at the very beginning of my high school year, my dad, he put a note on my mirror and he, it said, Emma, nothing in a makeup bag could ever make you more beautiful than you already are because a beautiful heart makes a beautiful woman. And I'm not sure how I could love you much more than I do today. So regardless of whether it was homecoming or prom or anything that I got to get ready for, I loved it because I was always reminded that the Lord saw me beautiful, whether I was all dressed up or I was in sweatpants and a t-shirt. So that's why prom makes me smile. But once again, just like homecoming, we went to go take pictures. And guess who was there? The one and only Josh McDaniel. And so we got to we got to take a picture at prom too. And but still, even up to this point, he's just an incredible friend that I'm excited I'm gonna get to go to college with. Again, we're just kind of being friends, and so 
I don't really see her for a long time. And then comes May 30th. Then around May, it was, I think I was going to meet with a friend. And I was meeting with my uh, youth pastor, my mentor at this time, and we're just sitting having coffee talking about what I'm speaking about that night. When I walked in, Josh was there. And lo and behold, Emma Mae Jenkins walks into this coffee shop and my youth pastor is like, oh, Emma, and I just lose it. I go, I go pale. I, I can't even talk. I got so nervous all of a sudden. And I remember getting so excited to see him. I hadn't seen him since prom. And he told me that he was going to be speaking at his youth group that week. And I totally wanted to go, but our family was going to go out of town. And so, but I remember just getting so excited. And I remember when he told me I was so inspired by how he was so willing to be the leader that God has called him to be. Because God has called us each to be his hands and feet. But something powerful happened when we're actually willing to step into what he's called us to do. And so I was so pumped and encouraged when I saw that he was willing to step into that in that way. And so finally, so we have a little conversation and she leaves and she goes have coffee with her friend and it's just me and my mentor. And we're just talking, it's like, what was that? And so it was towards the end of me meeting with my friend for coffee and Josh comes up to our table and he says, hey, you wanna go grab lunch or dinner sometime? Um, whenever you come back. And I was like, oh, oh, yes, I would love to do that. So in July, at this point, I've been thinking about it and I'm praying about it. I'm like, okay, I think, I think Emma Jenkins. I think I like Emma Jenkins. So we ate and we talked and it was just so beautifully sweet. And then y'all, okay, this is something that's just special. When a guy asks you to also go to ice cream, just take note. That's just some simple advice, just take note. Because he asked me to go get ice cream. So then we continued to go and get ice cream and we walked around the park and once again, just as it was at coffee, like it was just so fun to talk with him. And I felt, which I'm gonna be myself regardless of who I'm in front of, but I felt so welcome to just be me when I was walking with him. And that, that was just, that was very, very sweet to me. And I get home from our, lunch time together and my dad was like Emma so how how did the how did the lunch time go it's like you know what I think he's gonna be I think he's gonna be one of my best friends and that was honestly as simple as it was was he was gonna be my best friend I didn't see him at all for the rest of the summer and at this point I was really hesitant because I am great at rushing into relationships of just rushing in and not really like caring and not really praying about it and not really like thinking about what does God want me to do. And so it talks about in Proverbs of seeking wisdom. And so that's what I did in this relationship is I, before I even thought about it, I went to like my mentors and I went to God and I went to like really godly friends and I was just talking about, like, is this something that is, is this something that's good? And so there was many times during the semester that I would run towards the idea of it. And then there were many times that I'd pump those brakes and I'd run away away from it. We moved in at Liberty um, August 22nd. And the awesomeness of that was we didn't even plan this, but we were in the same dorm building, okay? And so we, we began to see each other all of the time because we started hanging out with the same friend group and he was on floor seven and I was on floor three. And so I began to see him all of the time, which was really cool. And finally, it's like we started ending up in the same friend group. We started going to the same church and it just kind of happened. So backtrack a little bit. I went into college um, with a very specific and bold prayer request. I was praying to the Lord that he would not let me have feelings for any young man that he did not intend for me to be with because I didn't want to be operating out of distractions. I didn't want to be operating out of my um, emotions. And so I just wanted to be acting on what the Lord was leading me into. And y'all, I have to be so real with you. There are a lot of handsome Jesus loving fellas at Liberty. Okay. And I, I hung out with a lot of them, but I didn't, I didn't feel like I liked any of them in that way. But there was something special about Josh, and he's he's a very handsome fella. But I, I felt about him in a way that I didn't 
with any other young man that I had the honor of spending time with. There was just something sweet about getting to walk with him. And I remember every time I saw him, I would get excited. I remember when we would go do something in a group setting, if I found out he was coming, my heart would beat extra fast. And I couldn't really tell you why at the, at the time, but I was just excited. But I was very intentional to not not really talk about it because I didn't really know what where these feelings were coming from. I didn't know if they were legit. I hadn't been praying about them a whole lot. So I was like, okay, just hold up a little bit. And so I'm talking with my uh, mentors and my friends one night and they're like, just be more intentional with her. Like you're running away from the idea of it. It keeps on running back to you. So see what happens whenever you run towards it and see if this is what God's wanting you to do. And so um, I think it was about a month or so into being at Liberty and I called my mom and I was like okay mom so Josh is hanging out with our friend group and and I don't really know I don't really know how I'm feeling about it and my mom took that as okay she needs my help in trying to move Josh out of the friend group. And so I was like, wait, huh, hold the phone. Mama, I don't think that's what I'm trying to do. I I don't know how I'm feeling about him, but I really like him being with us. And she was like, oh, well, well then this is, this is your game. I was like, okay. And so I still hadn't really told anyone about this. And I just prayed about it. I was very intentional to guard my heart because in Proverbs 4.23, it says, guard your heart above all else for everything that you do flows from it. And I didn't want to be speaking out of my feelings. I wanted to speak out of where the Lord was leading me. So I spent a lot of time in prayer and just it, honestly, the Lord spoke to my heart, enjoy being his friend, Emma. Just enjoy the season that I have you in and enjoy spending time with him. And so all throughout the, up until um, around the end of October, beginning of November, I just enjoyed getting to be his friend. Um, but then we get to November 1st. That's when I had the idea, I'm gonna take her out on a hike. Okay, we're just gonna go on a hike. The leaves started to turn their colors and I had to make it so clear to Emma. I was like, Emma, let's go on a hike. And then after we go on a hike, we can take our friends. And the way that he asked me to go on this hike was, it was very exciting because he, he texted me, okay? And he said, Emma, would you, whenever the leaves start changing colors on all the trees, do you want to go on a hike? And then we'll do something with the group. So I kind of had the hint of, okay, I don't think he's wanting to go with like a, a group of people. I think I'm about to go on a hike with just me and and a boy. I was like, oh man. But I was, I was excited and so I was like, you know what, I'd love to. But as soon as I hit sin to yes, I'd love to, I got so nervous because I had, this was just new. I was about to go on a hike with Josh McDaniel just us and I was I just didn't know what it was gonna look like and so I remember being very very scared and out of being scared I asked my roommate to come with me <laughs> on this hike and I I truly was debating it I didn't necessarily want her to come with me I no, don't get me wrong I love being with her but I wanted to just be with Josh but a part of me was scared because it was the unknown and so I FaceTimed my parents I was like okay here's what's up Josh has asked me to go on this hike, and I'm really excited about it, but I'm very, very terrified at the same time, and so I want Carson to come with me, and they said, no, you can't do that. You have to, you have to go just with him. If you bring Carson with you, he's not, he, he, that's not what he's wanting. He would have asked Carson to come with you if he wanted both of y'all to come. I was like, you know what, you're right, and so leading up to November 1st of us going on our hike, I mean, I was in constant prayer, constant prayer of, Lord, I am so excited about this and I ask that you help me to cast my cares on you because I know that you care for me. And I know that this anxiousness and this nervousness is not from you. And so I place it in your hands and I ask that you help me to just enjoy, enjoy this time with Josh McDaniel. So November 1st came and- Finally, we go on the hike alone. I remember getting so pumped, so pumped. I was nervous all the way up until I got out, I stepped out of the elevator and I saw him. And the moment I saw him, I was like, 
wasn't nervous at all anymore, which that was just very, that was just so cool how the Lord did that. We go and grab Starbucks and we just walk and we talk for hours and hours and we lose track of time. It was so fun because it was full of us getting to walk and talk about what the Lord is doing and how he's been shaping our heart. And we got to talk about just our families and we got to laugh together and we got to go eat at Cracker Barrel. We had to hike back in the dark and all this time, but on our hike back, I asked her the most simple question. And honestly, this question didn't come out of some profound area or some mentor. It just kind of came up and it was definitely a, a question from God of Emma, how can I, how can I honor you? How can I bless you more, Emma? And she loved the question, but she didn't have a response, and nor did I. And that question in itself honored me, and I was very intentional to, I didn't want to answer him just to give him an answer, and I didn't want to just fill the air with, with empty words that I hadn't truly put thought into. And so, I said, you know what, let me pray about that and I will get back to you. And I asked him the same thing and he also said, I'll, I'll let you know. And after this hike, I knew I could date Emma. I was like, Emma, it, 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 she's, she's the one, she, I could date her. She, she honors God, she loves so well with her whole entire heart. And so what I did just to make sure that I just wasn't being all love crazy, as I came back and I have a list of things that I want in a wife like non-negotiables, this is what I want in a wife. And so I go and I'm just checking off all these things on this list, I'm like, Emma meets this. So then I go to one of my really close friends at Liberty and I'm like, hey, does Emma meet this, these qualities? And just like, yeah, she surpasses them. And so my final step was, is I go and I read Proverbs 31. And you've always heard like Proverbs 31 woman. But if you actually read in depth of what Proverbs 31 is, it's not, it's not a mother writing to a daughter, it's a mother writing to a son. It's a mother writing to a son of what you should find in a wife. And so this is what I was reading. I was reading Proverbs 31 in the concept of thinking, is this what Emma is? Is Emma a Proverbs 31 woman? Is this what I could find in a wife? And she meets them and she's truly a Proverbs 31 woman. About a week went by and I was I was praying and praying and praying over God just please show me how it is that I can that I can honor Josh that I can honor Josh better and how can he honor me and I had like the simplest little sentence that he put on my heart he just said seek me first and at first like he told the Lord told me that like at the early on in the week and I was like Man, that's like very simple. I'm, I'm, are you sure? And so I kept praying about it and kept praying about it. He was just, seek me first, seek me first. I was like, all right. And so about a week passed by and I was like, Josh, I have, I have how you can honor me better. And I shared it with him. Um, and she comes up and she's like, I want you to love God first. And this was a, this was a huge thing because in my past relationships, I've only loved the person first. I've loved the idea of them first, but I've never loved God first in the relationship. And so it was a, it was a huge God moment. And then I asked him, I was like, so how, how can I honor you? And before I share this with you, um, I want you to know that the Lord all throughout the semester has really been showing me what his grace is. And he's been teaching me how to be still in his arms. And just as a little girl dances with her dad in the kitchen and stands on his toes, she's not dancing on her own strength, but she's dancing in the strength of every step that her father takes. And she's moving right there with him because she's standing on him. So all throughout the semester, the Lord has been really singing over my heart and quieting me with the beautiful truth, Emma, let me love you. Let me love you, just receive my love. Because I think my heart had been very loud and chaotic as I felt as though I had to earn his love and earn his grace. And God said, Emma, no, my beloved one, I just wanna give this to you as a gift. And may your life be a overflow of praise and gratitude for this love that you simply get to receive. So that has been like the anthem of my semester of letting God love me. And so when I go to Josh and ask him how I can honor him, he said, Emma, let me love you. Like, let me 
honor you. Let me serve you. Let me do what guys are supposed to do to women to love them and to respect them and to honor them. Like, let me do this for you. Y'all, yeah, I, I had the biggest praise party in my heart with confetti and balloons and strobe lights going off all over the place because everything about when I, every beautiful time I hung out with Josh, I saw a reflection of God's heart directly into my life. And the Lord continued to, to speak to me through him in ways that just blew me away and swept me off my feet because that's what God does. And it was so, oh, it was so cool. It was just so cool, okay. We come to the point that I really just need to tell her of how I feel. And so I kind of, I'm trying to think of all the places that we can go because whenever you're with MMA Jenkins, everybody knows MMA. And so, Everybody wants to meet her, everybody wants to talk to her, but I had to get her alone and really open up my heart to her and tell her how I feel. November 14th. November 14th was very exciting because Josh asked me to coffee and I love getting to be with him, so of course I said yes. And it was so fun because it was after our classes had happened and I went and met with him at the Starbucks that we have on campus. And he was sitting at this table that was, it was, so the way Starbucks is set up, there's like this little bridge and then you have little tables set up by this big window. And he was by the big window. And I love windows because light shines through the window and I love light. So it was just a great place to sit down. And so we're sitting at this table and man, we're talking for about 45 minutes, but all I can think of is how am I going to bring up this conversation to Emma? And we talked for probably 40 minutes just about our day and about the awesomeness of getting to be in college and about the speakers that had come to convocation that morning. And I'm like, God, just open, like, just just open up my eyes to see of where you want me to insert this like statement. Something that I love about Josh is he would constantly throughout the semester ask me how, how not only how I was, but what the Lord was teaching me. And that meant in itself meant so much to me that he cared about where I was in my walk with the Lord. That was that that was just beautiful. And so he asked me, so Emma, what is God teaching you? And throughout that whole week, um, I had been reading Lamentations 3, and it was all about waiting in the Lord. And so I was like, oh, Josh, let me tell you. Lamentations 3, and I just read it all to him, pulled out my phone, just had to tell him all about it. And then I said, so what? what is God teaching you? And I was like, God, this is, this is the time that I'm going to tell her. And she, I go into her and I tell her, I'm like, God's been teaching me something since May. Um, and from May, he, I was really battling if this is right. And in July, I really saw that this is something that from God. And so I prayed about it even more. And I kept on denying it and accepting it and back, going back and forth. And then in August, I really saw God pushing me towards it. And I finally accepted it. And now I'm running towards it. And those were my deep, deep feelings for you, Emma. <laughs> <laughs> he and he took a deep breath and I could tell I don't know I could just sense that there was God was teaching him something that it was kind of it wasn't as easy for him to talk about and so I was like all right I'm I don't know what he's about to say but I'm ready to listen and he goes on to tell me what the Lord has been doing in his heart um, since since we had met and um, how the Lord has been putting it on his heart to to pursue me and as he's telling me this I just kind of sit sit back in my in my chair because also throughout this whole semester the Lord has been doing quite a lot in my heart regarding Josh as well but keep in mind I hadn't really been talking to many people about it besides the Lord and although I had I had feelings about Josh I didn't know that he that he felt this way about me and it was just really exciting and also what was so so cool was whenever someone tells you that they they feel that way about you um it josh could have gone about it in many ways he could have right off the bat said so how do you feel about me and so i go into all this of how i wasn't expecting a response out of her i was honestly expecting a no but it was so cool to see of how she returned and she's like, I have the same feelings for you. I'd be lying if I didn't. And 
from there, it was awesome because I challenged her. I was like, I have such passion behind this relationship and I'm in this for the long haul and I want you to feel the same way. He said, I, I wanted to tell you right before we went back home for Thanksgiving break so that you could pray about it and so that you could seek the Lord in his word and in, in, in the advice and godly counsel of your mentors and your parents and because I want to then come back together and see where it is God is wanting us to go and then he prayed over both of us and that blew me away because I, I never felt pressured I never felt obligated um, I simply was like man this is somebody that that wants to honor God first too I immediately went and I called my mom and I called my dad because I was like y'all look what God is doing this is so cool this is a this is a young man of the Lord who who loves Jesus and is after his own heart and cares about other people above himself and who respects me in such a in such a beautiful way and I, I could just go on and on but it was so exciting and so then a couple of days later we leave to go to um, back to Arkansas for Thanksgiving break and that was really really exciting because I got to sit down face to face with my family I got to go and eat supper with one of my mentors and just share with them all of what God was doing. And I also got to come home and go back to look at a list. So when I was um, 16 years old, I made a list of qualities that I started praying over my future husband. And I'm going to share this with you because I'm never going to date someone without the intention of marrying them because that's the whole purpose of dating a person and so before I said yes to Josh I wanted to make sure that I wasn't compromising or settling on this list and what's so beautiful about this list is in 1st Samuel 16 7 it says that the Lord doesn't look at the things people look at for people look at the outward appearance but the Lord looks at the heart and so that was what my list reflected nothing on my list was about what he looked like on the outside but it was all about what his inside looked like and it was all of does he excite in wisdom and does he love the Lord with all of his heart his mind his soul and his strength and does he surround himself with with godly Psalm 1 Psalm 1 pals and is he gonna be an awesome teammate with me that will build the kingdom of God with me and so as I as I looked through this list I was like mom dad I'm not settling like this is so exciting and I just prayed about it and prayed about it and everyone that I truly um, take to heart their their godly counsel because they speak to me from God's Word they were all confirming it and so the Lord everywhere I would turn he would he would confirm it midway through Thanksgiving I get the most nerve-wracking text from Emma. I was in the middle of the movies and I saw this text and man, I could not think about that movie anymore. It just simply said, let's grab coffee tomorrow. Man, it went a thousand different ways in my head of how tomorrow was gonna go. So I met with him for coffee on November 26th and that was a very sweet day because I got to got to tell him, hey, I have so much peace with you pursuing me and I have peace with you doing this. And at this point I'm like, yes, that's great, but let me talk to your dad first because I wanted to talk to the dad first to get his wisdom, to get his advice, to get his approval to date Emma. And so the next morning at 6.30, I wake up early and I go get breakfast and it was a great conversation. We talked about the seriousness of what a relationship is and the magnitude that it has and how it's supposed to glorify God and not disobey God and how together you can, you can get through life together and you can glorify him even more. And leaving that, getting his approval, I knew that it was like, all right, I'm gonna date Emma Mae Jenkins. My dad came back saying, Emma, he's a 10. And that that meant so much to me because my dad trusts me and my dad knows that I'm not just gonna go make a willy-dilly decision off of my emotions. But to know that my dad, the one who has been protecting my heart and the one who has been leading me in God's love and has been praying over this man that I will end up being with, for him to come back and tell me that he has approval and he has complete peace about it, it was huge. And so, I was so excited, but still even to this point, we're not officially dating. I just have to figure out a way how to ask her now. We've both said that we're ready to date, but it hasn't actually happened yet. And so on our way back to Liberty, Josh said, Hey Emma, like, can I take you out to dinner? And she's like, yeah, 
Like, I'm like, what day, what day are you least busiest? She's like, well, you know, I think Thursday is pretty good. And so he said, he, well, he didn't say anything at that point. He pulled out his phone and I was like, why? <laughs> and, and he said, well, let's go to dinner. And okay. On the outside, I was like, oh, that would be great. But on the inside, I was like screaming, okay? Because I was about to go get dinner with Josh Daniel. I was so pumped. I was surprised that my socks didn't slide right off because I was so excited and I was just gonna jump out of my seat. But we, the only thing that I knew- Be ready at 420 and wear a dress. That's all I knew. And so once again, the word wait was just impressed on my heart all week. And my roommate, she knew all the details. And even though I knew she knew all the details and I knew Josh knew the details of this date that was to come, I I didn't wanna ask them because the Lord kept pressing on my heart, Emma, enjoy the wait, enjoy this time. And just as whenever you're walking with the Lord, you don't know what tomorrow looks like. You don't know what it is that he has in store, but you do know that never will he let you down and never will his word return void and never will he settle on you because he has exceedingly and abundantly greater things in store for you than what you could ever ask or imagine and in the same way i i had no idea what this date was going to look like but i trusted that it was going to be beautiful and because i trusted it i got to enjoy the wait and so thursday came and that was a beautiful day because josh mcdaniel asked me to be his girlfriend and that was one of the easiest yeses i think i've ever had the honor of saying that november 29th